Hello, I'm Adam John Williams and this is going to be a video demonstration of WIPI, the Wii Interface Programmable Performance Instrument uh, that I've made as part of my degree. It's going to serve as a quick demonstration, also a user guide if anyone else does want to download the patch and try it out. Uh, you're going to need a computer running Max MSP, um, uh, a Mac because it needs to run Osculator as well to get the OSC messages from the Wii remote, so obviously you'll need a Wii remote as well. And uh, that's it, so let's take a look. Uh, first you're going to need the uh, Wiimote to Max patch for uh, Osculator, I've included that in the archive for this. Um, although if you set your own up, as long as the addresses are the same, you can see the address messages in Max MSP for the ones that I use. And uh, right, let's get the patch open. Okay, so here it is. Uh, we'll go through some of the features. Let's take a look. Okay, so up on the top left hand side we've got our bank selection and using the plus and minus buttons on the Wii remote that's where we cycle through which banks are being used. This is also indicated on the remote itself uh, using the four LEDs at the bottom in binary, so we've got uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and back to 0, uh, always indicated there, so you don't really need to look at the screen unless you want information like uh, you know which features and uh, effects are currently being used. Uh, below that we've got the packing and routing, so this is where the uh, detail that comes from the Wii patcher, at the top left hand side here, this is what decodes the information coming from the remote, uh, you can see the things moving there, and sends it and packs it into one set of data that comes out. That goes into the bank selection, and then the packing and routing decides which of the patches on the right hand side of the samplers or the synthesizers and MIDI get the data. So you can see if I scroll through, the LEDs beneath each patcher indicate the one that's currently selected. So see I select uh, patch 1, I know I've got the Amen break on there, so I'm just going to tap A. And it works the same on all of them, so I've got some different drums. And some bass. Uh, I think there's a vocal loop. Batman Scoop, Crumpet Clan, tear up the club, make you wave your hand. Some strings. A uh, Rhodes piano. A vibraphone. A clarinet and uh, then some gamelan percussion. And for all of these sample banks, we've got the same controls, uh, where the A is to uh, one-shot trigger it, you know, you, you know, press down, and it'll play, release and it'll stop. If you use the trigger on the bottom, the B button, it's going to take the uh, data from the vertical uh, gyroscope and assign that to the playback speed, so this it takes it and latches the information, so you can... And it stays there. So that's a, a way of latching the speed to one that you want set. If you want to fix that so that it's not always taking the gyroscope data, just press the home button and it locks it to one. So then I can... Have my sample looping. Then to stop that, you just tap the A button quickly, and it'll stop the uh, playback. It works on all of them exactly the same. If you use the uh, nunchuck attachment, the axes of the joystick control the time machine patcher, which is here. Uh, now inside the time machine patcher, there's a sub patch that just decodes some of the information. Uh, let's take a look, including a flux capacitor that travels through time or something, I don't know. But actually it does have useful features. Um, the start time of the sample is controlled on the left, ax uh, left to right, and then the end time is controlled on the up to down. It only takes this information when you hold down the C button, and then you press the Z to reset it. So if I select patch 1, 
and then move the joystick while holding C, I can adjust the loop times. you can get some good kind of square pusher style effects and some nice glitchy things it works well on drums especially but you can get interesting effects on vocals things like that anything that will sound a bit weird if you uh, loop it at a short time below that we've got the filterator uh, any one of the samples and also the two synthesizers can be sent through a biquad filter which is built into each sub patcher which if I open one of the samplers you can see here uh, there's the filter graph object and a bi-quad and it's controlled with a series of gates uh, about whether the sample gets sent through the filter graph or not. So if I uh, tap the button number 2, you'll see the purple LED beneath the currently selected patch will turn on and then we're filtered. If you press and hold the uh, down button on the remote then the twist on the right and left of the remote becomes the sample cutoff and then the resonance of the filter is on the vertical so and it'll remember the place you set it to so you can although bear in mind this will also react if you have the uh, vertical gyroscope locked with the home button it'll affect the resonance on there too so don't get any resonance control that way so don't forget to uh, unlock that gyroscope when when using the filter controls. Uh, the other LED that's beneath each one on the left hand side there the blue LED indicates whether you're currently using the gizmo real-time uh, FFT pitch effect so works fine there but if I hold the up button and shift upwards <laughs> going to affect the pitch without affecting the playback speed so that's quite handy if you want to shift things into the right key. Uh, the final uh, LED underneath each one if you tap the left button it's going to mute it which I'll explain more about that in a minute it comes in handy for certain reasons. Um, as well as all these uh, samplers we've got two synthesizers so there's the select the uh, key they play and it's fixed to a major key but then you can also get the relative minors and uh, if you just press the right button it'll shift through the key uh, in which case the joystick then becomes a pitch still got the filter effect but obviously no gizmo because you don't need real time pitch shifting when you can determine the pitch. Uh, after that synthesizer that's just a basic saw wave. We've got a uh, square wave and the uh, you still have the pitch bend but you can also control the duty cycle. got uh, a MIDI output. It's uh, similar to the previous two, but it generates MIDI note events based upon uh, that information. But uh, at the moment it's a bit buggy and it produces a lot of extraneous sort of note data because of the constant output of movement from the gyroscope. So that's something that will be fixed in a future version. Same again, you can control the uh, key and the pitch, but Obviously there's no filter and there's no gizmo because no audio is actually generated, only MIDI note data to get sent to other hardware. Um, so any of the extra controls that aren't mapped to things, you can see the LEDs underneath there, I've just mapped them to uh, stuff that you know you might need. They're, they're all just mapped to CCs. Some of them are mapped to momentary ones and the rest are mapped to uh, latching switches that just give you a CC from about value 96 in a range of 0 to 127 so you could configure that for whatever you want or, you know you could probably come up with some quite cool uses for it in Ableton Live something like that. Um, the first patch 0 is all bank patcher 
And with this, you can control all the samplers at once, which if you just do it straight off, it's quite messy. <laughs> but this is where that mute comes in handy. Um, say I know there's the ones that I do want, like, I want the Amen break, then I'm going to mute it, which I'll explain now. Uh, and I want these uh, bebop kind of drums, so let's keep those. This bass, and the vibraphone. Then I can just head back up to wall bank, hit the mute, and it'll invert my selection. So now only the ones I want are going to play back, and I can control all of the playback of them at once. <laughs> That means you can also control uh, the speed. I mean, the others are all still playing, but they're muted. So then you can go through, you know, all the loops are going to be in time, and it'll just work pretty nicely. So let's say I just mute a bunch of these out. It'd be quite good, you know, you could get some soloist instruments over there, or uh, I think it'd be quite handy for beatboxes as well. Something I wanted to implement was um, live sampling, but it just, <laughs> it was all getting a bit complicated for kind of the scope of this assignment, so I didn't go for that this time. Um, I mean, something else I sort of played around with doing was samples that didn't, you know, I mean, they didn't have to loop in time with each other because of a lot of the kind of stuff in the place. Gamelin samples, so I can just... I'm not going to there.